We're gonna go into one of the most recent world records that you have never seen, and we're gonna start right now. So in the realm of women's weightlifting, there's crazy competitions going on between the weight classes around the 49K class, where we've got Jordan De La Cruz and our own Haley Riker battling for these spots. Then you look at the 59K class, and then you're looking at the 71K class, and you see the 71s internationally, you start to recognize like, this weight class is stacked. Toma is in there, Ecuador has a fantastic lifter in there, and then you start looking at Okay, the 81s, Ecuador's got another lifter in there. The 87s, even though it's not an Olympic class, they've got the return of Tamara Salazar, who also is an Olympic medalist. Is she gonna go down to 81, or is she gonna stay at 87, or go up to super heavyweight, where there's other players having a massive impact? And we start to see there's a lot of moving pieces in the realm of women's weightlifting. There's a lot of stuff going on. And that brings us to one key individual when we're talking about toma we know that toma has been dominant at that 64 class we know that toma was dominant when she moved up to 71 we know that things have been rolling her way for quite a while now as she's come back then we start to think about some of the important players okay so think about for me nessie del Homes. okay so she won the olympic title in the 76k class now she's moving up to the 81 and the big factor now is that there's another Dahomey, her sister, her younger sister, who traditionally has been a 64K weightlifter, who lifted at the 64K class in Tokyo, and she ended up finishing sixth there. And now we're looking at what is this individual, as she starts to age and as she's starting to fill out into the 71K class, what is she doing? A lot of fans have not seen what Angie Dahomey has done in Cuba at the Grand Prix because there wasn't a lot of people there on site to actually be reporting on what was occurring. And we're gonna show you what she did in the snatch, what her technique looks like, and what that means, one, for the Olympics, but two, even for the Ecuadorian weightlifting team as they battle with three or four or five different freak women to try and figure out who's gonna make their Olympic team. So she's coming out at 113. 113. And I was fortunate enough that even when we were just down in San Bariloche in Argentina, I was able to witness her and her sister, Nancy, and what they were doing during training, what they were focusing on, what their technical aspects were. And it was absolutely fantastic, one, to see them pushing each other, but just what their patterning was like. So you can see just maybe a little bit forward, a little jump to the side. Let's go back and look at that. Just a little jump to that right side for her. Maybe a hair, a little shift right there, okay? A little forward, corrects it. 113 looks like a toy, okay? So she looks like she's starting to fill out 71, definitely getting a little bit bigger, definitely getting stronger, clearly getting stronger. Uh, looks confident. Now, the other big factor that I think we've gotta recognize is that 71 is a weight class. That one, it's loaded. And I wanna just, let's look at that technique, okay? So right off the floor, she does a great job here with those knees clear and back. Okay, knees clear back. She stays flat footed all the way to this point. And this is something that Quo does really, really well. I wanna go back and highlight this. Let's go right here, check that out. So she's still flat footed when the bar is in her hip, super, super upright position. And that helps her finish more vertical without getting super behind the bar right there. And then that big upper body finish with those elbows coming back and big punch. Now. One of the big factors is she has to post a total to be in the top eight. But not only does she have to post a total to be in the top eight, if she's in that top eight, she has to be ranked higher than at least two other people on her team. One of the aspects with Ecuador is that they have a very good super heavyweight lifter. They have an Olympic medalist in the 87K class and they have an Olympic champion in the 81K class. And then they have Angie who's coming in now and really, really starting to grow into her body. She's really becoming a phenomenal lifter. She's the younger sister. So now she is only 23 or 24 years old. She's typically been a 64K lifter. She just got third in the 71s at the world championship and is really starting to gain a lot of confidence. So there's a lot of factors at play. There's essentially four women fighting for three spots and in turn fighting in three spots that are a very hard weight classes, specifically the 71 and the 81K class. And there's a potential that one of their Olympic medalists 
may not make the team. A long shot here, but there's even further potential that one of the sisters might knock the other sister off the team. I don't foresee that happening, but it is a possibility. So let's keep watching. Let's see where she goes from that 113. Okay, so she's going to 117 here. <laughs> That's a crazy, this is incredible, okay? So 117 is on the bar. She's doing a ritual, focusing on those positions. Again, just pay attention to that technical execution. A better lift there, more calm, good. Jeez, jeez, that's a crazy lift. So now, 117 for a 71K lifter. Just think about how heavy that is, okay? Think about what that means. I'm gonna actually, I've got her page up here. So she's still only 22 years old. Okay, so that's a great angle here where we can see look at what she's doing off the floor okay let's go back here we can see those knees clear back and again what happens when the bar gets into the hip the knees come back under look at how tight that is around her knees okay her chest is coming up this actually reminds me of of Shigashev's technique that we analyzed recently let's go back right here and you can see here in this position she's still flat-footed She's so, so patient. That left foot is starting to come up, but she's so patient, then has an excellent finish off the hip with that upper body, rotates and puts the bar where it needs to be. Great technique. So where is she gonna go from here? We know Toma's world record's 120. We know Toma's put up a huge total. We know that she's in position, that she could potentially be a top two player, potentially could win the Olympics, similar to her sister. She just won the Pan American Championships. She just got third at the World Championships. She's really growing into that weight class. She's been a 64K lifter for quite a while. Going back when she was younger, she was a 69K lifter, but Ecuador has spent a lot of time developing her and her sister. They put a lot of effort into this. And I think that's one of the fantastic aspects is like they can see going back to 2017, she was lifting as a senior. So in 2017, we're looking at six years ago, she was only 16 or 17 years old. So that's the type of development that's necessary. Six, seven, eight years to get to that elite echelon. And another big thing to bring up is that in Bogota last summer, Okay, last summer at the Pan American Championships, that's when she first snatched 113 kilos uh, in 2022. So now she's opening at that 113 and then she took 17 and now she's taking 121. So let's see what happens here. Ooh, little trip, that's crazy. Little trip there right at the end as she's running up the steps. Isn't that just, just think about what type of focus you need. You're so excited, you're ready to attack this. You're ready to get after it huge lift she probably very likely knows if she can make this lift in one or two clean and jerks that she's going to put herself in position that it's going to be very hard to knock her out of the top two or three in the entire world it's going to be hard to beat her at the olympics in paris so let's see what happens here 121 this is one kilo over the world record set by toma and even even better on that lift even better technique better patience she sits in the hole waits for it let's see what this looks like in slow motion that's just an absolutely huge lift most countries if you're a 70k male lifter that's a very good strong lift there's demos so piros is in there and that's the other factor is like the u.s has three animals in the 71s you know meredith alwan who's a world champion kate vibert who's a world champion olivia reeves who's a junior world champion multiple absolute freaks okay so let's see this technique let's go back let's watch that again Needs come back, patient into the hip. And I think that's some of the big factors when you're analyzing Quo, when you're watching Dahomey's, watch the knees, watch the patience through into the hip, watch that upper body finish, how quickly, how long the pull is and then getting under that bar. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's go back and look at this. Let's go right here, okay? So what do we think about? Pull right off the floor, push those knees back. Stay patient through the hip. Okay, so right there, getting into the hip right here. Let's go 
back. Stay flat footed, stay flat footed, stay flat footed, stay flat footed. Right here, not the best camera work, but still absolutely fantastic positioning. I'm trying to watch her feet now. Boom, feet slide quickly, boom. Out into that catch position. Ends up being the world record, an absolutely fantastic lift. And I think that this just shows like what's going on in women's weightlifting within each country. The competition is absolutely insane. The, the amount of stress that these lifters are going through when they're getting into the qualifying. And then what's even crazier is that you might have a sister knock off another sister or an Olympic medalist not make a team because of the qualifying procedures. And then on top of that, you post a huge total right now, even going into worlds in Saudi Arabia, you can post a massive total, but then still potentially get sniped on the back and by a teammate or a sister or another Olympic medalist. That's what's making the world of weightlifting so interesting and so intense and so crazy. And it's great to see what these athletes are doing. It's great to see what these athletes are doing with their technique as they're filling out their weight classes and becoming better individuals, becoming more mature weightlifters. And the performances are starting to show. If you guys need help with your weightlifting or you need thumb tape or some champion's chalk, head over to garagestrength.com. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.